Hello, I'm back today with a little plane. This is from the good people at Banggood and they sent me over this one. It's by Ishii and it's called the A6M. And I was interested in it because it had a lot of um, interesting features. It's a tiny little plane with a 1S coreless motor, but the interesting thing about it is it has a six axis gyro. It's got this button which you're supposed to make it come back or turn or something. I thought that's very interesting. Also has absolutely no assembly, which I thought, well, well, that's interesting as well. What I've got here is the RTF version with three batteries and the thing is packed, pretty much ready to go. If I take it out of the box, plane in the front, radio in the back. Look at it, it's so teeny. Now I'm no uh, stranger to small planes. I've flown this one, but this is even smaller. <laughs> and one thing about them, of course, is they do not like the wind. So it might be challenging finding the right conditions for this. So in the box, you get obviously this, the instructions manuals, which I'll be reading in a second. Get a bag with batteries, wheels. I noticed it had a wheel on the back, but none at the front. So there is some assembly. It's just popping these wheels on. Batteries wise, we're looking at 400 milliamp hour 1S's and there's a little charger in there, a USB charger. Now, even though the website said crash resistant, they clearly haven't met me. And one thing that could well break are props. Although I, I know it's here. We've got a, a two-bladed prop here. We've got one spare two-bladed and also this three-bladed one, which is interesting. Finally, we've got the control itself, uh, a basic little radio. We seem to have some, some modes here because we've got expert, uh, mid and beginner. Perhaps that's about the stabilization. And this one says aerobatics. You press the button for aerobatics. Interesting, we'll find out what that's about. Well, I'm gonna delve into the manual, put the legs on and then see what we got and see how it, uh, how it works. So I'm gonna have this guy Put the wheels on, I've put a battery in. The battery's quite a, a fiddle just to get back in, but I suppose being nice and tight, it at least makes sure the center of gravity is right. Got some batteries in here, and you can see it's a full, full channel control. There's our ailerons, there's our elevator, and there's our rudder. The way the um, throttle works is you go up and down again, and that arms it, and then you can make it go. There's no steerable tail wheel or anything, so you probably won't have much control taxiing, but this is so light that I don't think you'll have more than, you know, a foot before this thing's in the air again and, and landing again because it's very light. It's not going to roll around too much. The other thing is the, the three modes you've got on here. If you look there, it says expert, medium and beginner. At the moment it's an expert and when I pick it up and do stuff, nothing happens. If I change that to beginner, and they call this thing X-Pilot. It's basically the stabilization system. You can see as I move it, you can see the ailerons trying to correct. The elevator will go, the rudder will go, it will all go around. I haven't found that much difference just here messing around between beginner and medium. Uh, but I suppose you wouldn't until you're in the air. So it's kind of going to be the case to fly it and see what happens. We've also got the acrobatic button, which I think does some sort of perhaps a split S type turn or something like that to, to turn back to you. I'm not sure. We'll check that out when we're at the flying field. Now, I suppose the only problem with this one is because it's very small and very light, it's not gonna fly in all conditions. If we look at the instructions here, it says winds up to five to seven miles an hour, which is practically non-existent wind for my area of the world. So fingers crossed we'll get a decent condition pretty soon and we'll go out and we'll give this a fly. But you don't have to wait. Let's do a jump cut. Hello, can you believe it? We have a reasonably nice day. It's not too blowy. It's not quite five to seven miles an hour, a little bit gusty because we're on the coast, but uh, this is like the one day in months and weeks that it's not been raining or blowing a gale. So we're gonna try and fly this little thing. We're gonna figure out what the acrobatic button does, what this says it's a one touch turn thing, which is instead of a trim switch, see what that does. and. Uh, We'll check it in all the modes and see what happens. I'm excited to try it. A little bit nervous, but um, yeah, let's give it a try, see what happens. Hello, it's me from the future. I'm just editing this, and what I notice is my footage where I'm looking at the plane and talking about it is really quite long. It's like 20 minutes of stuff. Actually, th this was cut down from like over 50 minutes in total. Uh, the reason I did it is because I wanted you to, to experience my sort of journey of trying it out and like, crashing a bit and finding what works and what doesn't so rather than edit that more tightly together in sort of you know seven or eight minutes i thought just let it run mostly and uh, and we'll go with that so obviously if you don't watch the whole thing you know you can just forward through and you're not missing an awful lot just 
little bits of, of wisdom nuggets from me if you like and some silence where I'm just enjoying myself flying. Anyway, I'll let the flying bit get on with it. Enjoy. Okay, battery's in, let's power up there. I'm gonna start it in beginner mode to see how well the, uh, the gyro thing works. Obviously, my runway is fairly limited here, so I'm gonna go for a hand launch, see if that works okay. And then hope for the best. Here we go. We're flying. Oh, okay, so what's happening is, apart from the gyro helping keep me stable, full over on a stick doesn't actually let you go that far over. So it becomes very, very easy to fly. Let's see if we can do a... Ooh, hang on. <laughs> I took power off the throttle there because it was going, that's into wind and it just didn't have enough, uh, enough airspeed to get a, a generate much of a turn because it was in beginner mode. However, it's so light that, you know, nothing, nothing bad happened. So let's try that again. It's got a slight problem that I'm looking up at the sun there, but all seems pretty good. Go for another quick flight. Maybe I'll put it into um, mid. See if it gives me a little bit more. Well, just a little bit more, basically. Yes, so mid gives you a little bit more on the sticks. Well, so high now, we can see what's going on. I'm so out of practice flying planes, especially line of sight, but we can get, that's better. Yum. <laughs> you can see the wind. Which direction is the wind coming? I wonder, yeah. Whoa, go, oh, come around, come around, come around. Oh, it's, it's just caught up in some, uh, some sort of wind vortex down there. full throttle trying to come out of whatever it was caught in but I think mean, it just caught a bit more of a breeze than it could handle and down it went but you saw how it went down it's just like plop <laughs> and it was absolutely right I'm presuming it's absolutely fine oh I just missed the puddle that was lucky bit of uh, and mud there. Kinetic energy is what really kills models. Fortunately, there's not much coming from this guy, which is what we like. What it doesn't have, of course, is the power to get away if you get into problems and there's a bit of a breeze and you're not, you're not facing the right way. It just sort of sits there, not doing much. But in the right zone, the nice wind-free zone, you can see, flies like a butte. Feels very high for just a tiny little plane like this, I have to say. But this is an absolute doddle to fly. I am sat at practice. I'm not that good at line of sight flying anyway. But all I'm doing here is pretty much a little bit of height control, but it seems to, as long as you keep the throttle on reasonably, it's okay. And I'm just, just giving it a turn, turn input, that's all. So figure eight. And you can probably hear, or can't hear, how quiet this thing is. It just little 1S tiny prop propelling it through the air nicely. Hey, 
And as soon as I let go of the stick, it just levels out nicely. Whoop, and get too low. <laughs> you won't get out of trouble again. Yeah, it's definitely windier over that side. There's a bit more, it's a bit more open. So that wind's able to really get in there. Whoa, we just got a bit of a gust now. Come on, little plane, up you get. Come on, climb. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> it really struggled in that wind, yeah. If the wind is up, this plane ain't gonna like it too much, but if it's nice and calm, it's relative calm here, but it's just the old gust will really screw you up. I'm trying to see if I can do a close pass. I don't know how this is gonna look in the GoPro, but as soon as I get over by there, it really does struggle. I'm trying to anti-clockwise one. It's not my most natural of flying and I'm looking into the sun is half the problem, but let's give it a go. Here we go. Coming around. <laughs> I'm trying to take myself out there. I'm quite impressed with this little ex-pilot thing they talk about. It's doing a very good job at making my quite crappy flying look not too bad. I say not too bad, it's not it's not brilliant is it, but you know, it could be worse. I'm sorry, I notice I do noises of things when they don't make enough noise. So apologies for that, that's just me. It's not the actual noise of it. Yeah, I managed to shut up that time. Yeah, fun stuff. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try and land it, see if I can actually make a proper landing, which will kind of be a case of, whoa. Well, I didn't mean to land that time. It just, again, got caught by a gust over this side of the field. Just too much wind is coming over, I feel. But, you know, because I'm now an expert, I'm gonna put it into expert mode. No help for me, and <laughs> see what happens. Obviously that means no stabilization whatsoever. And uh, yeah, we'll just see what happens. I just missed a puddle. Yeah. This is what I'm loving about this. Every time it goes down, it's so lonely and gentle, it's just like, yeah, I've gone down. I mean, obviously, you know, crash it into concrete or a wall or something at high speed with the throttle full on. Might be a different story, but for what I'm doing here, it's, uh, it's going great guns. All right, expert mode. May not stay in expert mode very long because I am not very good and this wind is hurting me, but I can always chuck it back to uh, Regular mode. Okay, here we go. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> now, that was a harder crash. And what happened there was the prop came off. However, the prop just fixes on really easily. Like that, just snaps in and we're good to go again. So, I'm going to put it into mid mode again, just so I can flick it to expert and see if the trim is out a bit, because it, it felt like the trim was out. Okay, so that's back into mid. So let's flick it to expert. That's all right this time, it was just my flying. I've got, that was kind of an on-purpose landing. My orientation got screwed up. I thought it was coming towards me. Then I realized I was going away and I didn't have enough time to turn. Oh, pop, popped out again. Pop it back. Just this little press fit and it just, this little plastic bit just clicks over and you're good. I like that. Okay, I'm back in mid mode. Kind of interested in pressing this button and seeing what happens. 
because, you know, that's a crazy thing to do. All right, let's launch again. We're launching. Ooh, yeah, that's a, a little bit more windy. Okay, pressing the button. Whip. It kind of did a, a turn, was that? A bit slow. Will it do a loop? Oh, <laughs> I pulled back there expecting a loop and it just did a roll instead. That's interesting. So the idea is you, you click the button, click button, <laughs> and just hold the stick one side. Whoop. Come on back, come on back, you're okay. And it does a thing, but I click button, pull. Nope, it doesn't, want, it doesn't seem to want to do a loop. I could do a loop, I have no idea. I'm not too worried. It's a, it's a little bit slow, it's a little bit worried. You certainly need the height to press that button, or you're gonna be in some trouble. That's pretty cool when it happens. Obviously if you're in, I presume so, if you're in expert mode, it should just do that, which I'm gonna to have to test, aren't I? Seeing how slow I could fly it as well. It's not fast anyway, obviously, but Whoa! Flowing it low to the ground is the risk. And I want to I wanna keep going for this like nice low pass. I can show it to you. But, whoa, oh, no. It did not want to go there. It's stalling a bit there. Oh, we're okay. Oh, no, we're not okay. Oh. <laughs> I can as a landing, apart from the fact that, the, the, where's the prop gone? Well, I'm afraid it looks like our prop's been stolen. It's in there, maybe somewhere, but I've already got stung by the stinging nettles and uh, I can't seem to find it. So, fortunately, in the kit we had some other ones. And I have popped on this three-bladed one. It actually feels slightly less powerful, but we will see. I'm still on battery number one, by the way. The only problem with this thing then is, is basically stall recovery because it's not super powerful. It gets down low like this. We're in the, whoop, we're in the risk. Okay, full throttle. Try and bring it around again and that seems to have done the trick. Oh uh, yeah, when I try pulling up on the turn there, it doesn't like it. Let's use a bit of rudder instead, see if it's that's better. I was basically doing a bank and yank there, which doesn't seem to like much, but if I do a, a rudder turn with a little bit of aileron, that looks better. I think I was after in the gyro, because it suddenly launching into the air. Well, this looks better, doesn't it? Wow, you can go for ages on this tiny 1S battery. I think it's 400 milliamp hours. It's just, just chilling. I fly for like 20 minutes or something ridiculous. So, I want to try and do a purposeful landing. I oh, yeah, landing where I meant to do it, otherwise known as not crashing. Let's see what we got. We're gonna glide there, and yeah. I mean, if you had a a hard runway, I think you'd be all right. I haven't got enough GoPro battery to do free batteries on this thing. I was actually thinking about putting a 500 milliamp hour battery in as well but they were a bit big and wouldn't quite fit but given what you get from the basics and you get this is the set with three batteries you get a load of flying out of this you know what there's no shame in using stabilization if you're rubbish at flying on cayenne 
because I'm having a lot of fun just doing some circuits and flybys and things like that in, uh, in mid. Not quite beginner mode, gives you a little bit more turning circle, which is pretty important if you need to turn quickly. <laughs> Means I do get to have a lot of fun with it still. I don't know what it's going to feel like when it, the battery goes because it's, it's not like it's got superpower. And we've seen it sort of stall out because it's got caught in wind several times. And some of that is me pulling up on a stick too much, which it doesn't seem to like in its gyro mode. This is very chilling. So I'm going to change battery and see if this one touch return works, which is, is on the throttle um, trim, which obviously doesn't need a trim, but let's try it. Okay, new battery in, and what you do is before you activate the throttle, you press this in for several seconds till you hear a beep, and the rudder surface will respond. Mm. They just seem to be acting like general things to me at the moment. I'll tell you what, I'll reset this. Aha! So we've got rudder surface responding and now apparently if we press downwards it will come back to us. But it says it only does it if you're flying outwards exactly the same way. So I think we'll do a test straight away basically. Um, yeah because it's only going to come backwards. If we're over there, where's it going to go? All right, just do a quick loop first. Now I'm going to try pressing the key. Okay, flying outwards, press key. Press the key. Oh, it turned. <laughs> Let's try again. And press. And it turns. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Get over your head quick if you don't watch it. Okay. It works. It's a bit scary. And I'm not sure I like it. Because it doesn't it doesn't like it doesn't know where you are, so it generally flies past you. So I mean perhaps you know you've lost orientation, you know what's going on you press the button, it might help you, but it, it comes with its risks. Let's put it that way. I mean, that's fair to say. Use at your own risk. Shall we try expert again? Expert mode. Oh yeah, it's definitely out of trim. First thing it does, it goes all over the place, back into mid mode. I just don't think I can trim it in this space I've got with this wind is the problem. Need to be a lot higher, a lot more space needed. I'm just going to fly mid. Yeah, it definitely doesn't like you to yank and bank. It doesn't. It hasn't got the power. If you start trying to go up, it will stall. So, coordinating your turns with aileron and rudder are what's required. And then it just flies like a peach. And we've got a bit of a bit of wind just come up again. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people saying, hey, could you attach an FPV camera to it? And the answer is probably, oh, you might be able to, but I really don't think it'll fly very well. As it stands, it hasn't got much power and it's very, very light. So just adding anything to it will likely uh, screw up. We've just got a load of wind just come up here. Oh, and you can really tell struggling in that wind. Yeah, it's a shame it needs such a calm day to get the best out of it, but I mean, that kind of what makes it very safe and very, very nice. The fact that, you know, even if you do crash it, and I've crashed it pure nose in, all that happened is the prop came off. Woo! 
I was flying for so long, my main GoPro ran out of battery, so I'm on the GoPro 7. I'm just carrying on flying. I'm only on battery number two. I'm gonna put this down here, see if I can capture any fly pass, but yeah, I'm having fun with it. Expert mode is a little bit expert for me right now, but I'm really enjoying the stabilization. It's just so chill to fly. And even crashing it, which I've done multiple times, has not caused anything to happen except for the prop to fall off, which I lost in there, but fortunately it came with others. Anyway, I'm gonna carry on. And I pretty much just flew like this for the next 15 minutes, just uh, going around, doing little circuits, figure eights, practicing landings, trying to get some flybys. I won't make you watch it all, because it's gone on, I think, long enough, and this is a, a big, long section. But just before I left the field... Just packing up, and I decided to have one more look here. Ta-da! Found it. <laughs> We're completely intact. All right. Well, if you didn't work it out by now, I absolutely love this little thing. I get a little stressed when I fly line of sight planes because honestly I'm not that good um, I can I can generally fly around in a circuit but sometimes you know I lose um, orientation in the sky or I just managed to stall it and stuff and which I did many times on this and the thing just plonked down and was quite happy that little ex-pilot thing is so good um, you you really don't have to know much about flying at all as long as you know you know to turn the the X pilot system means you don't have to do an awful lot of uh, elevator control because it wants to keep itself level so you can just go around um, literally just turn with one stick if you like although I did find that it didn't really like the, the bank and yank too much it, just feeding in a bit of rudder and a bit of aileron really made it turn lovely when when you were pulling hard on the um, elevator to try and come around in a tight turn it didn't like that but man alive, this really does fly well. I mean, as I said, the downside is you need a really light weather day and that sort of cuts off um, flying in sort of regular conditions for me a lot of the time. But if you're in sort of a park, which is like enclosed by trees, you get that nice sort of gentle breeze coming. As long as you don't put it up, up above the trees, you'll be fine. Of course, you need to find a park where your local Karens aren't gonna shout at you for trying to kill babies and stuff. But just to put it in perspective, I weighed this with the battery and the plane, and on my scales, it came to 68 grams. So you could fly full throttle into someone's face and it will do much less damage than say a football. Uh, it's just ridiculously light and that was, part of the system why I loved it. I mean, it's small and you've really got to keep your eye on it and it's not very powerful. So if it gets into the wind currents and you're not high up, it's probably going to go down. But when it went down, even going down like nose first to splat, um, the worst thing that happened was that the prop popped off and we just pop it back on again. That system is genius. The amount of uh, broken props I've had from planes where basically you, you nose in and of course the motor tries to keep spinning and so a bit the prop breaks off or bends or something. Uh, this just like, this comes off, uh, the motor spins quite harmlessly and then you just pop it back on. It's it's fantastic. I wish I would have had some flat area where I could have tested out um, like takeoff with the wheels and stuff. But you saw how easy I just go like that and it flies off. Really, really do like this. I'd love a sort of slightly larger scale one with the same system where you know it had a bit more power and you could uh, fly it a little bit more aggressively and stuff but again I suppose that means you wouldn't be able to put it in the really sort of park conditions where I, I think this is sort of built for. Um, as far as the remote goes pretty nice um, it certainly did, did the job this is the, the ready to fly version so of course you get the radio with it there's also a bind and fly version which i presume you need a, a multi-protocol module to do and the advantage you might get of that is having a little bit of expo that you you might put on some of the surfaces especially elevator i found elevator a little bit twitchy when doing it but that might be the the ex-pilot thing messing with me the acrobatic button uh, it, it certainly worked. It was a little bit frightening because it was quite a, a slow roll. I don't know how to make it do loops apart from go into expert mode and do it yourself. Obviously I wimped out a bit on expert. Um, what I needed to do is be able to fly it into wind where I'm looking at it to see which way it's going and then trim out properly before I, I did anything else. I'm always very nervous. A flying planes, flying a little plane like this which is easy to lose and um, when I'm reviewing something, I don't want to like lose it or break it because then I don't have anything to show at the end. But yeah, it's it's a really fantastic package. I was amazed just how good this is. I thought this was going to be twitchy and hard to fly 
and you know just not very good but it's actually excellent I had so much fun with it even even flying it after I ran out of uh, filming batteries I was just like I'll oh, just do one more lap and then I just turned into just another lap and it flies forever the the battery said they're supposed to last sort of 15 minutes I'm sure it's getting more than 20 out of them I haven't checked how low I've got them um, I'll, I'll check that out later but I only used two batteries and I was messing around for over 40 minutes with this I mean some of it was me walking off and recovering it and, and throwing it again but it lasts a long time but if you get the free battery version wow this will go forever really really like this it's, it's the most fun bit of flying I've had all year and possibly the only bit of flying I've had all year so the bar's quite low anyway this has been the Isheen A6M0 and uh, was kindly supplied by Banggood and of course you'll find links down them below if you want to check it out in more detail I hope that review has been helpful I've certainly had fun with it and I will catch you next one bye for now well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching if you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel